So picture this. It's the summer of 2013. I'm 9 to 10 years old and staying at a summer camp. And if you're a Daft Punk fan, you might think you know where this is going when I say 2013. But you don't. So anyways, I say summer camp, but it wasn't your traditional summer camp. We weren't outside much or anything like that. We were inside most of the time. And inside, there were lots of game consoles. So one day, I'm at the summer camp, and I boot up a game called Just Dance 3 for the Wii. Flip through the song selection, and one catches my eye. Defunk by Daft Punk? That's the name of the band? I thought to myself, but the robot suits intrigued me, so I hit play. What was I hearing? Where was the singer? What was this instrument they were playing? What kind of music even is this? Keep in mind, I had never heard an instrumental track outside of maybe Eric Johnson's Cliffs of Dover, and I had never heard any electronic song before. Actually, with this experience, I'm reminded of a quote from Tim Bon Toast's dubstep video. Something that happens as you get older as a music fan is that you start being able to compartmentalize everything you hear because it reminds you of the stuff you've listened to before. And as useful as this can be to contextualize things you're hearing, once your mind is wired like that, you lose the sense of wonderment that can only come from having no idea how a piece of music was made. From hearing something so alien that you have no way of situating it in your mind other than just knowing that you love it. That was basically me when I heard Defunk. It was just so radically different from the pop and rock music I was hearing at the time. I had no idea what to think other than I needed to hear more, 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 more. So when I got home, I got on my computer and I went to Rhapsody, which is now Napster. But anyways, I went to Rhapsody and I searched Daft Punk. And I listened to Defunk again for a bit. And then I listened to Around the World for a bit. And then I found it. Discovery. My young mind was so entranced by the whole thing. Like, there were tracks like One More Time, Digital Love, and Face to Face with singing and a bit more of a pop ethos, but then there were also tracks like Crescendals and Veritas Quo that maybe I didn't enjoy as much on first listen, but I grew to love just as much as the poppier tracks. It was all so good. Rivers Cuomo of Weezer once talked about how when he first heard a Kiss album, he, quote, pretty much based his whole life around it. And that quote is important to me because I feel like we all have that one album that completely changes your musical landscape or musical direction forever. And this is that album for me. Even as I moved on to other styles of music like progressive rock and vaporwave, this album stayed with me throughout my adolescent years. I remember lots of little anecdotes about my love for it. Like I remember one time I was at a dance at my school. I walk up to the DJ and ask, hey, can you play One More Time by Daft Punk? And he ended up doing it. And I was so happy that I made an Instagram post about it, which is kind of weird. Also, scrolling down made me realize how terrible I dressed back then. But anyways, I did the opposite one time, too. I asked the DJ at a family party to play Too Long, because that was the longest song I knew that was actually danceable. Which is kind of petty. I remember showing my dad Digital Love, and my friend the anime adaptation of this album, Interstellar 5555 which is actually the first anime I ever watched. And both my dad and my friend didn't really get it or were into it like I was. I remember a lot of things about this album, and I'll spare you from telling them all, but there's a reason this isn't an actual review. It's because I couldn't ever do a review of this. Not only is this, without a doubt, the most played record of my life, it's one I'm very nostalgic for. Probably more than any other album. Is that why I have it listed as a 10 out of 10? 
Probably. But I don't care whether or not I'm blinded by the nostalgia. Because to me, the music and the feeling of nostalgia that I get from listening to it are inseparable. Discovery to me isn't just a great album. To me, it's a calling card of my younger years. A reference point I can look back on. It's funny, because that's what the album itself is, in a sense. It's a massive musical callback to disco, which itself birthed house music. It's looking back on a different time fondly, it literally is nostalgic. And for that to be my childhood album that I'm most nostalgic about, that's kind of beautiful. As for what Discovery is like for me today, sometimes I put it on and relive it all again. One more time. One more time. So, if I sound a bit different in this outro, it's because I'm on my shitty mic. Yeah, my mic decided to just stop working in the middle of production of this, so... Yeah. So I gotta find a way to fix that, but I wanted to say that there are five other albums that I wanted to talk about, like, my personal, like, childhood experiences with them. So, and that'll be part of, like, this series or whatever, so... Yeah, maybe uh, stay tuned for that, and uh, be sure to like and subscribe and all that bullshit. I'm the Logamuffin, and as always, I'll see you up ahead.